there's a most wondrous smell coming from the kitchen this day. Oh, thank you. I bathed this morning. Oh, I mean the food smells good. Well, as do you, of course. And, of course, uh, Ivor and Bledon are not here. Where are they this day? Well, Ivor has gone to pick pears at the orchard and Bledon, last I heard, he was seen drunk in a ditch. Oh, that does sound about right. Were he catching up to a duck again? Nay, it was a large cabbage this time. Ah. Uh, what is it that you're cooking this day? Well, the mistress has been looking much into what she can eat that will make her well. Oh, she's had many a physician come to see her. Aye, and the last that came said that food is good, but also moderate exercise shall help her. He has given me notes on the best things for her. He even says it should not be too vigorous, the exercise, because this could deplete her vital spirit. Well, I shall rarely see my lady stand up, let alone exercise. There are many servants who have been talking about this physician that came to see the mistress. Aye, ah, well, he thinks that moderate exercise equally distributes the spirit throughout the body. Well, I heard that this doctor said that exercise is good because when you're sweating, um, you open up the pores and all this sooty vapour or some such comes out. And so that's why sweating in a fever is good for you. And I was thinking... Blethin, he would do really well in a fever because he says he's always sweating. Ah, it is true, and I'm the one who has to put up with him wearing naught but an apron in the kitchens. Oh, I do feel for you, Anne. I always try and avoid the kitchen in those circumstances. So, what did the physician say then was good for the lady to eat? Well, there are many things that she already has. So, good wheat and bread was one of them. Um, also, he said... White meats, fish, um, a recipe for oysters he recommended the most, said oysters roasted on the embers and taken with oil, pepper and the juice of oranges provoke appetite and lechery. Um, the recipe goes on to say they must not be eaten in those months in pronouncing want the letter R. Oh, but oysters are but a poor man's dish. What of butter and cheese? The mistress still has to eat those, though, does she not? He did say that cheese being the thickest part of the milk is nourishing for the body, but he reckons that oil of olives is the best. What? Nay, I do not believe such. I have always had butter near the oil of olive, and there is no wrong with me. Nay, he said that oil is far more wholesome and necessary than butter. Oh, that cannot be true. You cannot compare oil and butter. You would not want to put oil upon your bread. Ah, but here it is written, oil of olives, fine candied narbon or minorca honey, each an ounce, lemon juice, half an ounce, well mixed together and spread on bread is an excellent supper. Oh, I do not like the sound of that. Well, it's what I'm going to make for the mistress, so I hope she likes it. What else did this physician say? Oh, many things. He said, uh, game is good, meats of an excellent temperature and fit to continue the body in health. Duck, goose and swan dispose the body of melancholy. Mutton, beef, kid, veal, pigs and rabbits are easy to digest and engender good blood. What was that about rabbits? Oh, good day. Anne Gidbard was just telling us what this physician said was good for the lady to eat. Ah, yeah, I've heard about this physician. He says sleeping at noon is dangerous. Do you really think that? Aye, unless in a chair with your shoes off and your head covered. Oh, well, you have never had any trouble sleeping any time of the day. It does not seem to be dangerous for you. Oh, where is Evo with those pears? Oh, what are you to do with them? Well, this physician has said, um, really, people only eat fruit for wantonness, a, a whim, a fancy. He said the French eat fruit as a dessert, which is unnatural. Oh, but the mistress is a liking of all things French. Aye, 
but he did say some fruit is good for the blood. Uh, pears taken with old wine after a meal is good for the mistress. Oh, and too much fruit could cause green sickness in women. Aye, and windy humour in men. I am sure the mistress were glad to hear that wine is good for her. Aye, she were. I also asked the physician as he was leaving if there was anything he could recommend for Blethyn when he's been down to Cardiff testing the wine for the Colonel. Oh, aye, and what did he say? Well, he said to make toss pots hate wine, then you must put within their wine green frogs, fried owl eggs, and three or four eels. You place them in the wine until they die. Oh, that is most strange. I do not think anything will work on Blethyn. Speaking of Blethyn, would you go and fetch him for me? You, you might need someone to help you. Aye, where is he in the ditch again? Aye, the usual one. Oh, I hope he doesn't try to run away again. He's mighty fast if he wishes. Well, it shall be good for you. This physician said it's good to sweat. Oh, I would rather sit in front of the fire. That would make me sweat. Ah, but the physician said artificial sweats won't work. Um, only in the springtime, and that's if it's against the itch or the pox. Well enough. I am to be away then. Ah, now, if you're sure winded as you run, the physician said, use loud reading and disputations, your windpipe will be extended and your pores will open. Oh, dear. That is good to know. Oh, I shall help you if you like. Farewell, Anne. Farewell. There will be a bowl of pottage and some good ale for you when you get back. Oh, now that does sound good. He thinks I will take one of the large nets to catch Blair then. Oh, that is a good idea.